Hey, this is Arn Rabinowitz for RedGiantTV.com. In this week's episode of Red Giant TV, we will boldly go where no one has gone before. Well, you know, maybe some have, but uh, we're going to do it too because we've paid for the tickets and there's no refund. Anyway, by now, many of you have seen the theatrical release of Star Trek, the new film directed by J.J. Abrams. And of course, with all those cool effects and even cooler technologies, many of you are now wondering... How can I build my own transporter? Well, we can't answer that question. You see, apparently it's much easier to disassemble molecules and put them back together, and we don't need that kind of lawsuit. But what we can do is show you how to create your own transporter effect in Adobe After Effects. Almost as good, not quite, but that's what we can do for you. And to help us with that is my good friend, Iran Stern, who you may know from the Creative Cow Adobe After Effects podcast. He is one of my favorite tutorial artists because, aside from knowing his stuff and being easy to follow along with, he has a lot of fun while doing it. At this time, Iran Stern is serving as the chief engineer on a starship in the 24th century. He got that gig mostly because of his accent, which makes talking about why the warp engines are offline much more entertaining. Anyway, word over subspace is that they have a man stuck on a planet due to some technical problem with the transporter. And while it won't help solve the problem, you can work alongside Iran by downloading the free trial versions of Trap Code Particular, Magic Bullet Looks, KeyCorrect Pro, and No Light Factory. So let us now take you into the future, where the entire galaxy has strangely adopted the English language, the metric system, and a style of dress oddly reminiscent of the 1960s. Okay, listen up, we have a situation on hand. Our man is trapped on the surface, and if we won't manage to beam him within the next 30 minutes, the temperatures will drop down under minus 200 degrees, and we will lose him for good. Now I know we still have a malfunction with our transporter, so I've asked my crew in engineering to design a new transporter based on the technology we saw last night at the movies. Yes, well, uh, we also have a theater in this ship, and yesterday all the crew watched the new movie here. I believe we can build a similar transporter here at our ship as well. Captain to Engineering, can you update me on the status of the new transporter? Engineering here, Captain, we have to build it in two phases. Phase 1, design a new particle beam that disseminates the body to molecules. And phase two, install it in the temporary transporter room and run a simulation with a humanoid data. If all goes well, we'll be ready to transport our men back to the ship within the hour. Very well. Please resume and report after each phase. Right on it, sir. Well, hello guys, this is Engineer Eran Stern with you, and as you heard, we are in the middle of a crisis here. So you are welcome to join me as I'll quickly show you how to design and install a new transporter using great tools from Red Giant software along with After Effects of course. I usually show you a quick simulation of what we'll create but since time is an issue here we can't waste any. So we'll jump straight into After Effects where we are going to create and simulate an alternative transporter. Phase 1 Designing the Particle System I'll start by creating a new composition using the Pulse Square Pixel preset. Set the duration to 10 seconds, name it Particles, and press OK. Now we are going to use Trap Code Particular to create the Particles Beam Effect, but before we create the particles themselves, we need to prepare a few helpers. You see, we need the particle emitter to revolve around in a circle shape and at the same time move up and down to create basically a cylinder of strings which meant to dissimulate the person inside. Sounds complex? Yes, I know, almost boring, but I promise you it will be fun as well. So I look into this and came up with what I think is the most efficient solution for this case. First, we need a simple circle shape to work with. So let's create a new solid at the size of 150 by 150 pixels and choose OK. Select the ellipse tool and double click on it. This will create a perfect symmetric circle around this solid. Next, we need to convert this mask to a path so we can attach it to a particular emitter. 
For that, let's create a new light in our scene. Go to Layer and add a point light. The settings here are not relevant because we'll only use this light to drive particles in the comp. If you'll get a warning about camera and lights not respecting 2D layers, just ignore it by hitting OK. Now we need to translate the circle mask onto the light's position keyframes. So select the mask, trill it so you can see the mask path, select it and copy it into memory. Then return to the light, open the transform properties, select position and paste. As you see, we use the mask we drew and by copying it from one attribute to another, After Effects converted it to four keyframes that represent the shape of the mask and move the light on this circle shape perfectly. Also note that the middle keyframes are roving keyframes. This means we can change the speed of the moving light as we see fit. This will come very handy in a moment. At this point, we don't need the mask layer anymore, so go ahead and delete it. Next, I want to make the light animation faster and also loop it so it will keep revolving till the end of the timeline. First, let's take care of the loop animation. So hold down Alt or Option on the Mac and set an expression for the position of the light. Then from the little play icon here, choose Property and from there select the first loop out expression. This expression will take the existing keyframes and loop them. Press Enter on the NumLock keyboard to accept the expression. Now if you press the spacebar, you'll see that the light keeps moving in a circle fashion till the end of the comp. Cool, huh? All right, I want this animation to happen much faster than what we have now. So I'll move my playhead to around 10 frames on the timeline and then make sure to drag only the last keyframe to this point. Since the keyframes in the middle are roving, they will shrink accordingly. See, I told you it will be useful. And another tap on the spacebar shows us that we have much faster motion now. Great, but we are far from over. We now need to flip this motion so it will be 90 degrees towards us and also make it go up and down in a repetitive way. For that, let's create a null object in the comp. This would be a controller layer which will not render in the final output. So go to Layer and choose to add a new Null object. Convert the Null to a 3D layer and parent the light to the Null. Then select the Null and press R to show the orientation and rotation attributes. Now set the X orientation to 270 degrees. This will flip the light to the right direction. Next we want to animate it going up and down. So go to the start of the timeline, make sure the null object is still selected and then press P to show the position values. Let's add a keyframe here leaving the X at the same value and only changing the Y attribute to a bigger value, say 460. Now go to two seconds or so and raise it approximately to 190 pixels. And then move to 5 seconds and set it back to its first value, around 460. Now it doesn't have to be pixel perfect, but we do need the motion to be going up and down. In order to keep it nice and smooth, select the keyframe in the middle, right click on it and set it to rove across time. Once again, press the space bar to get a preview of the light's motion. This looks very nice and will work great when we will connect it to Particular in one moment. Now, for this trick to work, we do need to change the name of the light. So select it, hit Return and call it Motion Path 1. It should read exactly like this in order to work with Particular. Good job! Now we are ready for the main particles design. Let's create a new solid call it Particular, make sure it's comp size. The color doesn't matter here, but I usually use a black color for my particles layer. Now press OK and go under Effect, Trap Code, Particular. 
Before we change anything, let's first set the motion path to our revolving light. For that, go under physics, open it, and under air, the first option here allows you to connect it to a light that should be named motion path 1. As you have seen, we have several options there, so you can connect it to more lights if needed, but for now, we only need to use the path of the first light in our comp. Press the space bar to see the intermediate result just to check that we establish the desired connection. Okay, we'll return to the physics section later, but let's work on the emitter and particles sections first. So under emitter, we need to change the amount of particles per second. I want to set it to zero and start to emit particles when the light reaches a certain height. So around one second and four frames, I'll set a keyframe with a value of zero and then move one frame and raise it to say 7500. I want it to keep emitting particles until around 2 seconds and 17 frames, so here I'll set another keyframe with a value of 0. This means particles will slowly fade away and stop emitting after this point. Now the values I'm using here might need a bit tweaking later, but to save time I wanted to give you the basic recipe and then later, if needed, we'll return and make the final adjustments. Okay, next, I definitely want to use a directional method here and also reset the direction spread to 0%. Judging from a quick preview, you can already see that we are going in the right direction. We have a spring shape of particles that's moving up and down using our motion path we laid before. That's nice, but we do need to touch on some attributes to make it look more impressive. I'm going to change the velocity here to 150 and the velocity random to 50%. Next, we'll work on the particle look. So open the particle section, change the life to 5 seconds and the life random to 100%. We don't need any feather here, so I'll set the sphere feather to zero. I want my particle to be very, very small, so I'll change here the size to one. Then open the size over life and choose the fade in, fade out preset. I think I might want a quicker fade in, so I'll draw here a tighter graph at the beginning. For the color, we'll set it to random form gradient. Now open the color of a life, choose the white to black preset, and let's change the black to a vivid kind of yellow. Just below that, change the transfer mode to add. Very good. Now I want to add more character to the particles. So if we move down, we can see that we arrived back to the physics section. Here under air, I can add more life to the particles by setting the spin amplitude to a higher value such as 10 or so. Also, let's set the spin frequency to say 5. We can also introduce some interesting motion by enabling a little bit of turbulent field. So let's add just that by changing the affect position to a value of approximately 20. Once again, this is a creative process and you'll have to check with your numbers to see what will work for you. In this case, I'm sharing with you what I think will look best here, but in your Starship, you can design a different transporter, which might need different settings. So just be aware of it. At the end of the day, if it won't work, you know who will take the blame. Not me for sure. Anyway, we are diverting again, so let's focus on the mission on hand. Okay, let's create another ramp preview to check where we are now. And as you can see, not too bad, but still needs a few modifications. First of all, the particles start to emit in the middle of the screen, which is not where I wanted them. This is an easy fix because we can still change the emitter position on its own. 
Although we did marry it to the light, I can still go and change its Y settings to say 445 or something like this, and the animation stays intact. God, I love particular. Okay, next we need to preview this with motion blur enabled so we can really see if the quality meets our standards. Easy enough, just enable motion blur for both particular layer and the comp and create another ramp preview. Now it started to resemble the transporter look from the new movie but we still have more work ahead of us. I think that the quality of the particles is affected by the fast spinning of the light and there are a couple of workarounds here in order to get it right. The fastest way is just to raise the frame rate playback. So go to composition, composition settings and let's change the frame rate here to 50. After doing so let's just verify that our light motion is still fast enough. Select the light and press U to make sure it still remains 10 frames. Because we changed the frame rate, it might need to be fixed. So if so, just drag it back to fix it. Now let's create another RAM preview. And as you can see, because we have more frames per second, the motion is much smoother and we can see more details, especially when the particles are colliding with each other. Speaking of which, I think that I want to add some additional particles flying around as there are few sparks here and there coming in and out from our main animation. It will also give it a more natural look, I think. For that, let's duplicate our particular layer and call it Sparks. I'll only change a few settings here to make it happen. Under emitter, go to the second keyframe and just reduce the amount of total particles to 250. Then change the direction to uniform and the velocity to a slower number such as 40. Now go down to the air system under physics and set the air resistance to 3. This will make the air thicker for this layer of particles and keep most of them closer to the general cylinder shape we have here. Let's create another RAM preview to see it in motion. Wonderful. I think the hardest part is behind us, but we do need to prepare the transporter beam itself. For that I want to plug in a few copies of this comp one on top of the other. Now, to get a decent performance, I suggest to render the current comp. This will save a lot of time as we will deal with the rendered movie instead of thousands of particles. It will also free up the ship's computer to other important tasks as well. So let's render this as a proxy. Make sure the comp is still selected and then go under File, Create Proxy. Be sure to set the render settings to Best Settings. Define your clip path and press render. At the end of this, you should see a tiny black square near the comp name in the project panel. This indicates that After Effects is now using a render file to preview this comp. Whenever you need to go back to the original setting and adjust them, just disable this square and modify as you see fit. In our case, we'll continue to build the transporter using this comp as a source. So drag the particles comp to the make new comp icon, press command or control K and change the name to transporter beam. Then press OK. Select the particle layers and press T to see the opacity. Now go to around 7 seconds and set a keyframe there. Move one second forward and lower it to zero. We don't need to see the last seconds of this particles animation. Next, duplicate the layer. Press S on the duplicate to see the scale properties and let's flip and flop it at the same time by typing minus 100 here. Move to approximately two seconds on the timeline and now you can see we have an opposite copy forming from above. 
Now select both layers and duplicate them one more time. Take each copy and shift it up or down until you fill in the gaps between them. Next, take each copy and slide it so it won't start at the same time. The thing I'm trying to achieve here is some random mix between the particles we created, so I will end up with more condensed stream from all basically the same source. This is again a creative process and not an exact science, so feel free to move them around and even mask parts that you don't need to see, change the opacity here and there, and even duplicate more copies until you're satisfied. I've worked with it a little bit and came up with eight copies. Each one starts a bit after the other and they are all located in a different places on the Y axis. I also recommend changing the blend modes for all of them to add. This will yield a very bright look where the layers are stacking together. Next, we'll polish this look even further by adding a cool flair to this particles operation. For that, I'll use my favorite Null Light Factory plugin. So go to Layer and add a new black solid. Then go to Effect, Null Light Factory, and choose Light Factory Easy. I really love this version of this plugin thanks to its impressive flair types. So let's see, from this enormous list, I think we will choose the Quick Take 200. This look is very, very nice. And in order to see the flare composed on the layer below, you can tick the Use Unmalt feature here. Now I'll quickly set a few keyframes to time it to the particles below. First, let's set the light source location to the middle of the screen. Now around 4 seconds in our timeline, the flare should be at its maximum values. So let's set the scale to around 0.17 and compensate by raising the brightness to 140. This will give us some glowing look which I really love. Ok, set a keyframe for both parameters here and move back to approximately 2 seconds and 10 frames and then lower the scale to almost its minimum, 0.01. I still want to see a point of light here before it disappears, so go few frames back and set the brightness to 0, then move forward few frames and raise it back to 140. If you solo this layer and create a quick preview, you'll see that we have a tiny light and then the flare starts to build itself. Let's repeat the same animation at the end. So go to the end of this, set a scale keyframe to 0.01 and then let's repeat the same thing which change the brightness to 0, come back few frames and set it to 140. Now after this, we want to select all the keyframes and press F9 to easy ease the animation. Now I'll bring back the rest of the layers and create another RAM preview for you. Aha, looking very good. The only thing I think I like to change here is the color of the flare itself. I just think it will look better if we use a blue flare instead of what we have a pinkish one. But since we are working with the EZ version of this plugin, there is no place we can do it here. So instead go to Effect, Color Correction and add the Tritone filter. Press the Midtone color and set it to a nice blue of your liking. And guys, I think we are ready to report back to the captain that the first phase is done. So let me create a RAM preview and try to call him once again. Hello captain, engineering here. I want to report the completion of phase one. It seems promising, but do you think it'll work? It still looks very odd. Nevertheless, please move forward and integrate it into the transporter room. Report back when phase two is complete. 
copy that captain. On my way. Phase 2. Install it in the temporary transporter room and run a simulation with the humanoid data. Now that we have our beam ready, let's see how well it performs. Open the transporter room comp. And this comp is based on a Photoshop file I've created using Adobe's Ultra Content. I've modified it to fit our simulation needs. And as you can see, there are three layers here. The back layer is the room itself. On top of it is the floor highlights. And last, there's also the transporter hanging from the ceiling. Okay, so we are good to go. Let's drag the transporter beam comp and place it under the transporter layer. I'll also change the blend mode of this comp to add. Now we need a clip of a humanoid to work with. I have a great clip here from the crowd control collection. This guy looks very much like our soldier who is still trapped on the surface. You can also get this clip for free, but know that it is a time sensitive download, so you need to hurry up. It won't be there for long. For more details, go to allbetsareoff.com and read for yourself. Anyway, we will drag this soldier clip under the transporter beam. I'll scale him and place him at the correct spot here. And then readjust the beam so it will cover most of his body. Now, as the captain implied, it doesn't look right yet. We do need to form the beam so it looks like it's warping around his shape more tightly. Now make sure the beam layer is still selected, and for that go under Effect, Distort, and choose Mesh Warp. Add more rows and columns as you need, and then move the playhead to the point in time where you see both layers at their full glory. Now zoom in and start to adjust the Mesh Warp points. You need to pull the points closer together and keep doing it around your actor's shape until it looks like it's warping in his shape. When you do this, try to move only on the X axis as too much warp here will not look good. Also, make sure to leave enough room around your actor so it will look believable when he or she will appear or disappear. Once this task is done, we are ready for the final part, which is to bring our man back or transport him away. Our mission here is to bring our man back, so at the brightest point of the beam animation, we'll start to create our mask. Select the men's layer and double click on the rectangle tool to create a mask around the whole layer. Press MM in sequence to see the mask options and let's set a keyframe for the mask path and then move forward let's say to five and a half seconds when the animation begins to fade away and set another keyframe. Now I'll return to the first keyframe, double click on the mask in the comp view and start to scale it on its vertical axis while holding down command or control so both sides will scale together. Beautiful. Now add a 40 pixels feather and scrub to check the result. Depend on your footage action and the particles created earlier, you might need to modify and refine it until it will look best and sync with your beams. You can also mask the top and the bottom of the beam layer to hide the areas you don't want to show. Now we'll sum up with few more tricks that will make this look even better. We need to add some color correction and light warp. We can select the soldier clip, go to the end of the timeline after the effect has ended, and then under effect, key correct, we'll choose light warp. I'll set the background to the room layer and modify the parameters as needed. 
I'm not going to cover this effect here, but rather refer you to the RGTV website. There is a detailed tutorial there done by our captain, of course. Yes, he does tutorials as well. Would you believe it? Strange, but true. Anyway, in this case, I think I'll back it up a little bit and blend it with our original background about 40% or so. As a final touch, I'll add an adjustment layer to the comp. And then go to Effect, Magic Bullet, and add my all-time favorite plugins, Looks. I'll press the Edit button and apply a quick preset from the popular film named Blockbuster. Then I'll choose OK, and once again I think I will mix it with the layers below by adjusting the opacity of the adjustment layer to around 75%. These two filters are great easy tools which always improves your composition and tend to give the extra notch needed here to sell the shot. Well, I don't know about you, but I think it's time to call our captain once again and report the completion of phase two. Then I will ask his approval to rescue our real soldier from the surface below. Okay. Captain, engineering here. Stage two is complete. Good work, Mr. Stern. It looks like we can count on you again. You have my confirmation. Let's get our man out of there. Beam him up to the ship. Aye, aye, sir. Mission complete, Captain. One to beam up. Wow, they're still using Adobe After Effects in the future. Good to know I have some job security a few hundred years from now should cryogenics take off. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this tutorial, you can find tons of Iran's stuff at his site, sterneffects.com, and of course at creativecow.net. And you can also buy some fantastic training DVDs by Iran, such as Motion Design with Adobe After Effects, available at training.creativecow.net. He also has another one coming out soon from the cow called A New Solid, so keep your eyes open for that. Oh, and Iran mentioned that you could get the crowd control clip of the soldier he used for free, and that's at footage.allbetsareoff.com, and then just click on the free clips link on the front page. In fact, just because I'm such a huge Star Trek fan, hey, I spent my honeymoon at Deep Space Nine. Oh, that was some good blood wine. Yeah, anyway, for the next week, if you use the coupon code Star Trek, one word on your purchase of crowd control credits, I will boldly give you 50% off. Did I use that joke already? Ah, crud. Oh, moving on. And as if the discounts weren't flying at you at warp speed, just for watching this tutorial, we're going to stun you a discount on Magic Bullet Looks, KeyCorrect Pro, No Light Factory, and Trap Code Particular. Okay, I'm sorry, I need to just check that again. Wait, we're, we're going to stun them a discount? That's what you guys came up with? That's really the best you writers could do, huh? Okay, anyway. Go to redgiantsoftware.com forward slash promos to get this and other special Red Giant TV deals. Now these are time-sensitive discounts. They won't last into the 24th century. All coupon codes expire seven days from the launch date of each tutorial. So again, go to redgiantsoftware.com forward slash promos to get the coupon codes for the most current Red Giant TV deals. And by the way, if you buy Trap Code Particular now, or bought it after April 7, 2009, you're eligible for a free upgrade to Particular 2 coming soon. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for RedGiantTV.com. See you next time.